Hello, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Tata. Eric Siska. And we hate movies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. Thank you for tuning in this week. If you're new to our fair little show, thanks for checking us out. We hope you uh, stick around. This week, we are talking about 1993's terror child thriller, The Good Son, directed by Joseph Rubin. Written by Ian McEwen of Atonement fame. The first man Booker Prize uh, winner to (laughs) grace WHM. Is this this based off a novel, then? No, it just was his, like project that he, oh, he wow. it was this just is... a, it was a great idea he had <laughs> you know what uh this is better than atonement i'll say it i'll say it i don't care for that movie either yeah. i think i mean the this script of this movie the story of this movie isn't terrible it's the direction and the acting and the other stuff and speaking of having problems with the the uh, directing uh, and speaking of New Year's Eve, when our call window is closing, uh, we last spoke of Joseph Rubin when we did um, 1995's Money Train. Oh, wow. He's also the uh, auteur of that horrible pile of garbage. If you want a movie that looks like a movie, hire Joseph Rubin, because it's just, <laughs> it's got all the, the nuts and bolts of a movie. Is it fair to say that this movie's kind of like... Uh, a million dollar budget higher than a lifetime movie because this could be a lifetime movie, right? Yeah, yeah, more or less. You're just you're you're injecting it with some uh, casting money because so you it, can get Macaulay Culkin. It's like you're you know work you know lifetime. It's like you're looking for stuff that will terror terrorize um, you know white you women. Know, yeah, <laughs> you know women women who who have children and stuff and yeah. what oh, what could be worse than getting a bad seed dude you know? it's not just terrifying women i was sitting here like uh hmm terrifying kids it's the same thing like when i watch those uh, svus where there's evil children you get some of those every now and again mm-hmm. i mean that's kind of everybody's biggest fear right it's just you know you decide to have a kid and you just get you one in a million, you get the evil kid. If you get a bad seed, it's like you know you're like the mother in this movie. Well, do I know, do I do I put up with it or do I throw him off a cliff? I think this opens up a phil- philosophical question of nature versus nurture. Oh, interesting. And I think a lot of times, you know, children of the corn don't just happen. You you're partially <laughs> responsible for that. Maybe you shouldn't have been doing all the you know. Showing them, you know, who's a fudge? Yeah, that, that that goes double for you, Amanda Gacy. Nah, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know what John Gacy's mother's name is. Well, I'll tell you, Eric, I think there's something to that, because as we see in this film, these parents are terrible. Yes. They're awful. They, they, they lose a child. The backstory is, uh, at some point, you know, the little little boy, little kid died, drowned in a bathtub. Played in a photograph by Rory Culkin. <laughs> Scream three, Scream four is Rory Culkin. Mm-hmm. Before you get that fucking dumb haircut, he looks ridiculous with that long hair. Absolutely he's, he's terrible. He's too tiny of a head. With he looks like a, like the guy at the end of Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't have a small the, head the, and the, big the, hair. The shrunken head. Guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Not the sandworm. <laughs> so yeah, they've lost a child. Yeah, they lose a child, and uh, weirdly enough, uh, Elijah Wood just loses his mom. Uh, and David Morse has some shady fucking business deal to do in Japan. <laughs> He's gonna this... meet with the yakuza. <laughs> yeah, this is a weird. His brother's like, I know your wife just died, but I need you to go seal this Tokyo deal. And you'll be set for life, and you won't have to worry about leaving your son Elijah Wood ever again. And there's there's a lot of like tense moments, like this is your chance. <laughs> you you're gonna finally you're gonna finally make it. This is what you always wanted, isn't it? It's just two weeks, and I got kids. <laughs> Most of them are still alive. Got a two out of three success rate. It's a real vague drug trade situation. I feel like, yeah, th- this movie's going on, and at the same time, in Japan, 
it's like uh, Black Rain or something. Yes. Like, you know, he's just going out there Black Rain and everybody. Which, by the way, a David Morse Black Rain-esque thriller. Yeah. I'll buy it. <laughs> I'd rather be watching that than this by a shit. Hundred, yeah, oh, him against the Yakuza? Hey, by the way, you know how we're off to a roaring start with this movie? The opening title sequence is in Comic Sans. How the fuck do you fuck that up? Like, just anything. Like, that's... A little less creepy. Nothing is worse than Comic well, Sans. It's about children. So. But that goes along with other shit that's totally inappropriate for this kind of movie. Like the score to this movie is all like, and he's like fucking dangling Elijah Wood out of a treehouse, and it's like, la 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 la. This movie has no boys fucking clue. Boys. No fucking clue what it is. The score is really terrible. The score is like really bouncy and like, it's like a Harrison Ford movie, but it's it should be creepy and like, there needs to be some. I'm not afraid of any of this, you know, and I I find. Uh, Macaulay Culkin is scary as the next guy. He's terrifying. This is like right after uh, Home Alone 2, right before Richie Rich, so he's still a creepy-looking kid mm. before he's a creepy-looking adult. <laughs> when, he, when he turned into an adult during Richie Rich? Yeah, I think so. I think that's what happened. He buys his way into adulthood. It was uh, right around the time they were parodying North by Northwest while shooting that movie <laughs> that he he became a man. So our movie starts out, Elijah Wood's mother dies of cancer. He, he just scores a sweet soccer goal, and it's like, yeah, yeah! And then his dad's <laughs> like, hey, stop! Your mom's dying of cancer! Hey, uh, coach, it's happening. <laughs> Which it's like, if it was happening, by the way, you're letting this kid go to a soccer game, why don't you just have him there? Like, I know it's not the easiest thing in the world, but, like, he just makes it. It's like she says goodbye, and there's also a weird, like, I'll promise I'll always be with you, which he takes way too literally. <laughs> That's the craziest yeah. part of this movie. He's kind of crazier than Macaulay Culkin, which we'll get to. He's nuts. He's a straight-up lunatic. He's a looney tune, because, like, they're in the... <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I gotta do this vague deal. I know that we just put your mother in the ground. We have to drive across country, because I gotta get the fuck to Japan by which, midnight tonight. Also... This doesn't make any flipping sense, right? So they clearly live somewhere in the Southwest. Right. It's like in Arizona or something. And they, they drive to what? What is it? Maine? It's Nantucket. Oh, my God. They Lord. live on Nantucket. And so he drives all the way to Massachusetts and then has to fly all the way back. Like, just fucking send him with the uncle. <laughs> you don't have to do this road trip. But it's or, like, this is what I, I thought of, though. It's like if the if the one brother is living in Nantucket... And by the way, sick drug dealer house. They totally live on this like gorgeous cliff. And this other brother's living in like Arizona or New Mexico or whatever. What is this business that they can live that far apart and they're still like working together on deals? He, the brother's not we're in it. The brother's like, you need to set yourself up. This is your deal. I think the brother's a vague doctor. Ooh. Oh, is that? I thought the, the I thought the brother was in on it. <laughs> is it on it? I was like, what what <laughs> scheme are they cooking Maybe the up? The scheme is like like listen, I will watch the kid for two weeks, then I get two percent. I just want <laughs> just just a taste. Or it's like a drop in the bucket. Or maybe it's a situation where David Morse is like, look, I'm going to go do, I know my wife's just dead. Who gives a shit? I'm going to go to Japan and seal this deal. And his brother's like, uh-uh, collateral. I need that kid for two <laughs> weeks. But just in case you don't come back. Also, why not just have someone, I mean, do you know nobody where you live? <laughs> like, have someone else watch the kid. There's a bunch of people at that funeral reception. You couldn't ask any of them to watch him for two weeks. You got to drive across the fucking country to dump this kid somewhere. And also, if you volunteer to watch my kid just after his mother dies, fucking watch my kid. Don't just. Mm -hmm. This is the well, bi my biggest problem with this movie. They're like, well, you're a kid. It's Maine. Go nuts. Well, just well, go nuts. Here's the thing with this: the, the parenting, the parenting thought. It's like, oh. Our kid died. It drowned in the bathtub. Why? We weren't watching it. <laughs> uh, oh, so what are we? So we have other, these other kids, and what are we going to do? Let's not watch them ever. There, there Let's is never some be severe, around. Severe, terrible parenting in this neighborhood. And I know it's like, you know, it's it's Nantucket, so you know, it's a small, small community. We're we're just before we we realize that kids get picked up and molested. Well, right, because you know we're not getting picked up off the internet yet, so that's yeah. still not a factor. Speak but for yourselves. <laughs> You were there day one. Day one, man. I got in early, ground floor. <laughs> but still, you don't just let your kids randomly just wander away and have no clue where they are. When you've lost a child. And, like, how do you 
let Macaulay Culkin kills his kid brother in the bathtub, right? This kid is like three years old. What is this kid taking baths by himself? Like, well, the mother, ha- the mother has something about like she because she blames herself because yeah. she's like, oh, it was just six inches of water. I only stepped away for a second, but also it's like you only stepped away for a second, like. You totally know Macaulay Culkin did it. Like, how is he getting away with that? Uh, you can't just, like, slip in there, grab him by the ankles, and hold him <laughs> upside down in the water till he's done, and then run out of there like nothing happened. Like, she has to know this whole time that her one son killed the baby son. Well, yeah, well, maybe she was in denial, huh? I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe the, she was just trying to cope with it, pretending it didn't happen. You know, the good son to the baby son. <laughs> Is that about a ghost? <laughs> it's about a ghost baby <laughs> that haunts Macaulay Culkin for once. Well, I think if you watch this movie and then you watch uh, the Changeling, that's kind of like a sequel. That's about a baby that got murdered in a bathtub. Ooh, George C. Scott, classic yeah. flick. Uh, so there's a weird thing on this road trip where. Uh, <laughs> Elijah Wood's playing Game Boy in the car, and David Morse is trying to talk to him. David Morse, by the way, phenomenal actor. Phenomenal Love. mullet, too, in this movie. Phenomenal mullet, for sure. Love David Morse. He's that fucking great George Washington. Mm-hmm. He was great on House. Love David Morse. In this movie, he's like, hey, uh, Elijah Wood, come on. I know your mother just died, and I miss her, too, but don't be a dick. Like, talk to me. And uh, he pulls over, and he, Elijah Wood's like, Mom's coming back, you know. She's not gone. And he's like, mm, <laughs> nope, she's dead, buddy. And he's like, no, she might not come back like a person, but she's going to come back. Like a zombie? <laughs> yeah, or, or like a bird. I, you know, I don't know if this kid's believing in like reincarnation or whatever. Or a giant slore. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's coming back as a giant slore. <laughs> the traveler. Has come. Your mother has returned. <laughs> Shows in the form of <laughs> slaw. <laughs> David Morris is like, I am hiding that Ghostbusters VHS. You've <laughs> just watched it too many times. <laughs> and this kid's like, he's like, look, your mom's dead. She's never coming back. And he jets out into the desert and the movie cuts. And then they're back. They're in Nantucket already. Like, yep. I need the end of that scene. Like, I don't know that kid got back in the car. Maybe, maybe he hitched his way to Nantucket. <laughs> <laughs> for all I know, so he just ran away from from home and like let dad go to Japan, and then he's like trying his trying to get his footing out there on riding the rails for a while. Yeah, and then he's just like, you know what? That last week, it's been pretty rough on the road. I'll go to my uncle's house. Well, I just feel a lot of that is probably like, look, we've got Macaulay Culkin in this movie. He's like the biggest child star in the world. We already have 15 minutes where he's not in this Macaulay Culkin movie. Yeah. We got to get to Macaulay Culkin sooner than later. So there probably is a scene where David Morse, like, chases him out onto a rock and is like, you know, listen, it's going to be okay. He's shaking him, like, really hard. Get back in the fucking car. And no more of this, no more of this nonsense about your mother coming back. It's a <laughs> God knows what. I don't even know what a slore is. <laughs> Put that game machine down. <laughs> well, he does. And I think it's in. I've heard this in more than one movie where somebody's playing a video game and their father or mother comes. It's like, whenever you're done bombing the universe, want to talk to me? It's like, there's no <laughs> fucking video game where you bomb the universe. All right. <laughs> He's you're like, I'm playing aliens. Tetris. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, b- back when they played back, back when Dave Morris was in college <laughs> and they played Pong on Atari <laughs> and got super stoned. He used to call it bombing the universe. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, I was bombing the universe for like five straight days. He's also eating a bunch of Milky Way bars. <laughs> hey, look, I love I love doing peyote in the desert as much as the next guy, but you got to talk to me right now, son. <laughs> this is just Dr. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> so they get to this house, and it's a, it's a snowy Nantucket winter. And uh, the first time we see Macaulay Culkin, he's wearing a terrifying paper mache mask. Well, he's one of the strangers in the beginning. Like, yeah. It's just really, <laughs> and he's just like, I'm not evil. Hello. Yeah, it's like Michael Myers Jr. Yeah, and these parents are like, oh, Macaulay. <laughs> and they were like, no, 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 no. That's the weirdest thing I've seen in years. <laughs> yeah, if I'm David Morris, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Oof. Dodged a bullet with that. <laughs> you want to come with me to Japan? <laughs> <laughs> You think he could hide stuff? <laughs> he does a weird thing, too, where they're like, take that mask off. And he's like, 
I made one for you too, Elijah Wood. Now we can be brothers. And Elijah Wood's like, oh, neat. And he puts it on. And then they hold on the shot of the two of them, their dead eyes staring at each other through these masks for way too long. And Macaulay Culkin's just like, (sighs) 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 like staring deep into Elijah Wood's soul. It's really weird. It's fucking terrifying. I'd be like, listen, dad. I've always wanted to see the world. I got two weeks off on vacation. So unless whatever you're doing over there is totally illegal, I would like to come see Tokyo with you. Just out of curiosity, what are your feelings about smuggling Fabergé eggs? <laughs> no, no real reason. Just, just... <laughs> No, you should just stay with your aunt and uncle. Just stay with your aunt and uncle. <laughs> you know, on second thought, forget I said any of that. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, too, you're too young to stretch that out yet. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, man. That's the world we live in. <laughs> the, my favorite part about Elijah Wood is, and Elijah Wood's very good in this movie, but he's like really, he's kind of like a 50-year-old man. The way he acts and reacts to things, like his conversations, <laughs> his conversations with Wendy Crewson is just like, just a couple of old friends having like a cup of coffee together. Like he's eating breakfast the next morning and they're just talking about the her day or whatever it's a weird kindred spirits thing and i don't know if it's because like he's he's clearly looking at uh to her as like you know you're my mom now kind of a thing which he literally confuses her for later on in the movie but i think it's like oh if i just you know if i don't act like a kid with her but i can be like a friend with her maybe we could go on a date like he kind (laughs) of wants to date this like we made this joke before on this show but like he kind of (laughs) wants to date this lady he really wants to take her out for like a nice nantucket at dinner it's weird the psychosexual shit going on all over this movie is very bizarre not unlike an ian McEwen book but very bizarre <laughs> like the stuff with a little girl is really weird it's like what the fuck are you doing with my girlfriend it's like it's well, your cousin it's weird when macaulay calkin's like you like looking at my sister yeah, you're looking at my sister, right? And I'm like, all right, this is weird twofold because it's weird that the characters in this movie are doing this, but it's also weird that he's literally saying this about his own sister in the movie. Like, because Quinn Culkin, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, she acted in nothing else really but this movie, which, by the way, so you got Macaulay Culkin, the biggest star in the universe. You got this girl playing the sister. You got Rory, who gets an on screen credit for his face being in a photograph. These parents were monsters, right? Oh, yeah. They were like money thieving monsters. Like, hey, uh, I noticed your script's got a fucking little girl character. You know what I got? A couple of little girls for you you might want to try out. <laughs> well, no, they demanded that she's in this movie. Oh, really? Yeah, I was, I was reading about it. He was like, package deal. You got, you got Macaulay? You got a little girl character, huh? That's Kit Culkin. Guess what? But he's Kit Culkin. The dad is a failed actor named Kit Culkin. <laughs> oh man, that's like a David Hasselhoff character. And you know, if Hollywood didn't pan out, we're going to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> we have a deal. Man, I wish uh, fucking Michael and Dina Lohan went to Japan and fucking never came back with that family. Yeah. You got both your kidneys, right? Why? No reason. We're just going <laughs> to Japan. Get ready for Japan. <laughs> <laughs> After they're burnt out on doing the the Japanese whatever movies, <laughs> we'll harvest them right. Only God forgives. Like, then they go to fucking Bangkok next. It's a real tour of depravity. Oh, man. That's an amazing movie. Yes, but I was oh man in Bangkok. <laughs> you can't bring kids to Bangkok. No, <laughs> you shouldn't be able to. You, yeah, you, you should get them taken away. by you, Like, the U.S. government should fly you in. We'll them. hold these at the embassy until you're ready to go home. Or it's literally like being at a bar. The second you let go of that kid's hands, I wouldn't pick him back up again. <laughs> like, you, just, you don't know what's happened. <laughs> So this movie is pretty much a series of like, well, for a while anyway, this movie is a series of Macaulay Culkin doing weird and horrible things and Elijah Wood just watching and not saying anything. It's yeah, exactly. Like it's they're fast friends. Like he gives them a terrifying mask. Elijah was like, oh boy, terror. And, (laughs) you know, that kind of, and it escalates and escalates and escalates and it takes a little while. It's kind of weird because like, obviously I know the trailer. I know that this kid's evil. But it would take a really long time to be like, is he? Isn't he not? Like, of course he is. It starts with, like, some little things, like they climb up to the ricketiest treehouse I've ever seen. By the way, now, is this a treehouse that that father is building? And it's like, and then, okay, and now guess what? The, the I know it's extremely high, but now the ladder 
is going to turn around. Like it's, it's spiraling terrifying. the tree. It's yeah. like, and it might be just an old like hunter's nest or something. It doesn't seem like this was designed for it's children. It's a death trap. Yeah. It's, it's, it's 60 feet up and nobody's, you just go up that tree house. Nobody gives a flying fuck where their kids are because they're all just sitting down drinking coffee wearing sweaters this whole fucking movie and they have the cliffs of ins- the cliffs of insanity are on the property as well it's literally the tallest point i've ever seen that cliff that cliff is wow it's really intense it's, it's, there's it no coming back it redefined cliffs for me and this is coming as it from a kid who grew up with a cliff in the backyard my backyard was a cliff, and I've never seen a cliff like this. <laughs> it's a really steep cliff. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, what I would imagine like the Mariana Trench looks like if you took all the water out of the ocean. <laughs> Just a fucking drop to hell. And mm-hmm. every day this mother who lost her kid goes out there, looks out, and is like, not today. It <laughs> just goes, goes right back out. In. In all black yeah. and stands near a dead tree like a fucking Poe poem. <laughs> It's horrifying. Speaking of horrifying and, and that, all that, now her her wardrobe throughout this movie, <laughs> this like early nineties mom fashion, she looks like a nun by LL Bean or something. <laughs> yeah, mom's the, had it really bad in the nineties. She, that the, she's got the longest skirt I've ever seen. It's on. the long, the <laughs> biggest sweaters. It's a bad, it's a bad scene. She kind of looks. Uh, she's got the haircut of E.T.'s mom. Yeah, uh, whatever that lady was, I can't remember her name. D. Wallace. Yes, thank you. She's got a little bit of a D. Wallace thing going on. But yeah, she just looks like an, L- an LLB nun is a perfect way to put it. Uh, yeah. So the, the uh, we're, we're going up this action movie, uh, like cl- this cl- this bird's nest. That yeah, yeah. Cl- Sylvester Stallone's hanging off of it. <laughs> I really think it, you're right, though, Eric, that it might be like an old, like, uh, like hunter's, you know, perch yeah, or something yeah, like, to, like that. Yeah, yeah, like shoot the deer. Because there's no real, like, roof to it or anything. It's just a bunch of boards, <laughs> like, stuck up in a tree. And, of course, one of the boards breaks and Elijah Wood falls and uh, Macaulay Culkin catches him. And this is the first of many appearances of little person stuntmen <laughs> who worked their hearts off for this movie. Yeah. Man, you know... the. This movie alone made their whole calendar. Oh, yeah. Like, every picture from the Little Person Stunt People's Association calendar (laughs) for 1993 was, like, stills from this movie. And Macaulay Culkin's line here, it's like Clarence Boddicker Jr. (laughs) Think you could fly, Bobby? (laughs) And that's, like, that's a big trailer line, too. It's like, if I let you go. It's also, you could also say it like Keanu Reeves, right? Like, if I let you go. Do you think you could fly? <laughs> you can also deliver yeah, it that yeah. way. It's a terrible line, but it's the one you see coming and you're like, oh, man. And this is their first interaction. And Elijah was like, that was weird. He pulls him up and then they just have a big old larf about it. And you're <laughs> like, what? That's horrifying. I would be like, all right, not hanging out with this kid anymore. That's fucked up. Well, I. I don't want to lose the little person stuntman thing just because I imagine two little, like a Matt Damon little person and a, a Ben Affleck little, little person writing their own script to get like to get a little kid action movie <laughs> <laughs> just, just to get the best parts, the but best it, stunt parts. But it turns out it was the writer of Atonement <laughs> who, who in fact may be two little people on top of each other. <laughs> Ian McEwen is just, a collection of little it's, it's people. It's Ian and McEwen. Those are first names. <laughs> They're just in a. You only see Ian McEwen do interviews in a huge trench coat. Yeah. <laughs> he has a really hard time sitting down on TV shows. Every 10 years, they swap faces. <laughs> I get to be on top now. <laughs> Two Brits named Ian and McEwen. I, I really uh, that that exists, that's a, right? Yeah. That's a Brit thing. I mean, we're just throwing out HBO shows left and right. If you want to, if you want to write any of them, go right ahead. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so everyone in this fucking country likes to get on a high horse about juvenile, juvenile obesity and juvenile diabetes. This, that, and the other thing. If Elijah Wood's a fat kid, he's not having any of this because he's just like, you know what? I'm just gonna go. If it was me, a little fat, I would have. Oh, yeah, I would have no been way. like, you know, I'm just gonna go house a fucking bag of Doritos and watch the Hogan family all day. All right, you go out <laughs> and enjoy your fucking your creepy shed and you're killing your dogs and whatever else weird cousin. I'm just drinking too much soda. Yeah, one day out with this weird cousin, I'm an indoor kid for the rest <laughs> yeah, of the time. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've got a two liter bottle of Surge and the Disney Channel. <laughs> 
I'll be inside. It's only two weeks. My dad's going to be back before I know it. Yeah, exactly. I think Have Uncle... fun killing things. And Uncle Buck is on right now. You look a lot like that kid, but you can go out and kill somebody. Because <laughs> I'm just watching Uncle Buck right now. <laughs> I had no... Oh, it's... I'm sorry. I'd come out. It's my favorite part. He's trying to get in the house. <laughs> Hot to trot is on right now, so you can go <laughs> and enjoy it. Speaking of uh, uh, health concerns we cared about in the 90s, there's a really great anti-smoking thing in this movie where Macaulay Culkin, of course, because not only is he, like, killing animals and threatening to drop people from tree houses, he's smoking cigarettes. Oh, what a bad kid. And he's like, uh, hey, Elijah Wood, you want a cigarette? And he's like, uh, no, turning to the camera. They give you cancer. <laughs> By like, the way, yep. to, to further emphasize that, he keeps his cigarettes in a graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, this kid, Macaulay Culkin, is the envy of all the little Jeff Dahmers and all the little John Wayne Gacy's. He's got access to a cliff. He's got some fields. He's got a graveyard. He's got a fucking bottomless well. Yeah, he's got the well from the ring, <laughs> which the- is also in a terrifying cemetery. You should never let those two things meet, a cemetery and a terrifying well. Yeah, don't drink that water. <laughs> But yeah, that would also, be gross. we're kind of making up a new little great show here. It's like the Muppet Babies, but with serial killers. You got <laughs> Macaulay Culkin, you got Jeff, da- little Jeff Dahmer, little Jeffy little, Dahmer, yeah, little John Gacy. You know, he's, <laughs> little he's John the- Casey keeps getting into the face paint. Class clown, <laughs> Teddy Bundy. He's the lady killer. He's always looking up people's skirts. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, put put pigtails and inkwells. Um, <laughs> Oh, Whoa. Jeffy Dahmer, he loves stuffing stuff into this fridge. We got him this toy fridge, and he won't stop playing with it. He locked Lewis in there last week. Uh, see, now we're running out. We need, now we need the guy that has the encyclopedia yeah, exactly. to help, help fill out the rest of the cast. <laughs> you could have a pretty loaded cast, I bet. Yeah, there's a lot. Baby <laughs> BTK. A little kid that looks like John Carroll Lynch. He's the Zodiac. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then it would just be and John Carroll Lynch as the Zodiac. <laughs> and it's 50-year-old John Carroll Lynch. <laughs> Principal Zodiac. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be awesome. It would be a good show. You're welcome, Adult Swim, probably. <laughs> and so, yeah, like, he's just... Key- the well, he's got, like... He's got bullets for this gun that he's 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 built. He he's, he's built hey, his own. Qu- uh, quick correction: He's got rusty, huge <laughs> screws for a gun that he's built it's in this his bolt gun thing in his fucking terror shed, which the mother doesn't deem to go into until the end of the movie. Guess what? You got a shed on your property. Check in on it from time to time. You know what? Uh, here's a. It's one word: padlock. Mm. And you know, Figure it out. Here's another word: parenting. <laughs> Padlock Fig- parenting. The b- the beginning of every morning, she makes them breakfast. Is like, well, enjoy the rest of your day. Talk to you soon. There's a scene where they're having lunch, and she's just like, "So, what are you two doing with the rest of your day?" I'm like, "You should be telling them because <laughs> they're them. fucking well, nine years old." One of the problems is they have an impossible house. <laughs> it's a yeah. movie and, house. Yeah, because at one point to to screw with, I mean, I'm getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but. Macaulay Culkin says that Elijah Wood wants to stay in Richard's room, the dead, the dead son's room. Yes. And the parents are like, oh, I don't, like the mother's like, oh, I don't know. I, you know what? You know what? If you want your own room, you could stay, stay in one of the rooms on the third floor. Wait, wait. Third floor, multiple rooms. The third floor? It's scary up there. Don't worry. Fuller's going to be. Oh, wrong Macaulay Culkin movie. I'm sorry. But why, 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 why are all these kids sleeping like in the same room when you have over three stories on your house? This that's, is an insanely huge house. That's the problem. Is sometimes Ian and McEwen get two different ideas of how, what a house looks like, <laughs> and it gets all jumbled up in the script. <laughs> 
And the, the how, you know, looking at the house when they're filming, it doesn't look especially large, no. but apparently it's a labyrinth. <laughs> I mean, it's not like Casper's mansion, but it's, you know, it's a bit, it's like a big New England house. I yeah. Yeah. That, and but. the best thing about it is it's, it's this awkward conversation where Macaulay Culkin, like Macaulay Culkin killed this other kid and he loves poke at his mom about it. Mm-hmm. So he's like, maybe he should stay in Richard's room. And the mother starts to like cry a bit. And the dad is just ganging up on her like, well, yeah, I mean, you can't turn it into a museum. <laughs> like, someday we need to take the, all those toys and throw them in the garbage. <laughs> so haven't you forgot about young Richard yet? It's been a year. <laughs> Four-year-old kid dead. I mean, uh, we've almost spent as much time without him, but it's with him. So let's, let's move it along. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is like he not only does he do all this like sinister like physical shit like killing things and whatnot, but yeah, he plays these head games. Another creepy example of that is when they're in the cemetery by the ring well and uh, they're waiting for Samara to pop out and kill them because they watched <laughs> the video. But uh he's like he's like, um, hey, so um yeah, you know, my my brother died. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that. You know, my, my mom just died. And he's like, did they let you see your mom when she died? And he's like, no, I wanted to, but they wouldn't let me. And he's like, yeah, I really like science. So, you know, I would have demanded they let me see her. Because you know, when I saw my brother drown in the bathtub, he was blue and cold. Was your mom cold or was she warm? And Elijah Wood's like, Two weeks, huh? <laughs> you know, I <laughs> think... couldn't bring me to fucking Tokyo for two weeks. Oh, it's uh, it's TJF tonight. Talk to you later, weird cousin. Like, oh, I... I think that surge is ice cold by now. <laughs> What's that? NBA jams getting fired up. That's the thing. All you have to do is park yourself in front of the television, and whenever he, he bothers you, just yell, "Knock it off!" <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you're a kid. You just like act like the bigger kid, and if you're just sitting there, like near that clueless dad, you know, like just in the vicinity, you're fine. Just ride it out. <laughs> He's not gonna drag you outside and make you do stuff. So yeah, just 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 sit inside. There's probably an endless amount of VHS tapes in that house. Just work your way through it, and before you know it, David Morse is gonna be home with a million dollars and a lot of blood on his clothes. <laughs> a million dollars and eight fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got this bolt gun, right? It's a bolt crossbow. It's like an American gladiator thing, you know. It's it's a, it's from assault. Remember assault? Yes. When, when you'd have to go around and like one of the different stations had this bolt gun, but instead of right. a tennis ball, it's a fucking rusty nail. And of course they have to be rusty, too. Isn't that just a disgusting detail? And he's like, oh, I'm going to shoot at this cat. And Elijah Wood's like, yeah, but just only scare it. The se- Again, just he's trying to kill. You know, I don't know if anyone else in this room has had to talk to a therapist as a young kid. <laughs> But the first thing they ask is, are you hurting any animals? And you just know. And by the way, don't stall. <laughs> yeah. You got to say, it's got to be We've all been no. there. It's got to be a quick no. It's just got to be. <laughs> nope. And uh, do bugs count? Okay. Uh, do mammals count? <laughs> oh, that'd be, oh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the little serial killer TV show we've got. Little critters, we'll call them. Mm. Uh, there's like a clueless guidance counselor, just a, a hippy dippy, like you know. You just recycle the teacher from Beavis and Butthead, exactly. And he just <laughs> you, you plant him in there. You guys are always in my office, okay? So he 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 almost kills this cat, and it, you know he has this "I missed" kind of thing. And Elijah was like, "That's funny." It's a really fucked up, like. Uh, like the 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 bolt like goes into a tree like and like a bunch of sawdust flies out of it and he's like oh you scared him good and then like the camera very deliberately like it's right up in Macaulay Culkin's face and he's like the sight's still off and you're like I get it he's evil <laughs> another great uh, moment of evil is uh, Macaulay Culkin brings Elijah Wood to this rundown old, like, warehouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. And they're just <laughs> hucking rocks and breaking the glass. And then uh, they're just doing this for, like, you know, a couple of walls. They're just knocking this shit out. And then all of a sudden some guy's like, oh, god damn it! 
Where was that dude? They have way too much time to break this glass. And it's like you think it's abandoned, but then when you see that guy go, oh, God damn it, there's like 50 guys behind him like doing work. Like, yeah, dude, it's, like, it's an actual running <laughs> yeah, warehouse. Exactly. <laughs> I guess everyone's wearing headphones or something. <laughs> That's where we make the uh, Nantucket nectar. <laughs> I couldn't hear you over the uh, sound of grinding peaches. <laughs> Era, oh no, it's one of them evil kids again. <laughs> oh crap, it's the good son. <laughs> He's known as the good son. Watch out, it's the uh, little critters. <laughs> Come to assassinate me at my juice factory. Oh, that'd be great. And then uh, Fred Gwynn comes up and goes, oh, no, a little boy. And he runs away. And then he, somebody cuts the back of his ankle. Oh, cuts that Achilles tendon. Ooh, that's the worst in that movie. Oh, little critters love cutting tendons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we talk about the ghost sighting in this movie? There's an out-and-out ghost sighting. Yeah, this is a great one. <laughs> it's like Elijah Wood wakes up and, uh, you know, he, he, like, goes out in the hallway or what? He's, like, going to the bathroom or something. And he sees what we all clearly know to be the mother because yeah. this is not a movie where the paranormal exists whatsoever. Yeah, that, that, that's that's kind of established really early on. You just know that there's nothing paranormal about this kid. It's not even in, implied at all. Yeah, it's not it's not a Damien thing whatsoever. Like, he's just it's a just, socio. He's a born yeah. sociopath. Na- like, that all was, natural. Yeah, <laughs> which is almost more terrifying because yeah, that's sure. like a real thing. But uh, it's ridiculous the way the movie does it. Again, terrible filmmaking, but... It's it's the mother, and she's walking downstairs, and he's like, Mom? Mom? And you're just following this woman walk down the stairs, but they just refuse to tilt up a little bit so you can see her head. And she's just walking in, like, this wispy nightgown because she's an L.L. Bean nun. Yeah. And you're like, right, look, it's it's Macaulay Culkin's mother. Can we just please yeah, yeah. Get, get to that so we can get on with the movie? <laughs> and he's, like, following her down the stairs, and he's like, Mom, you came back to me. I knew you would, just like you said. And then she turns around. It's revealed that it's her. And she's like, oh, Elijah Wood, you know, come on now. Your your mom's not here. You know, it's Aunt whatever. And he's like, looking her dead in the eyes, like, I knew you'd come back to me. And she's like, yeah, when's David Morse getting back from Tokyo? This sucks. There. It reminded me of a scene in one of my, it's not one of my favorite movies. It's an awesome, The Gate. Uh, when oh, the that, Johnny Depp movie? No, uh, when it's oh, I'm thinking Dorf of the kid, Ninth Gate. Sorry, the Stephen Dorff kid movie, and like you know, a bunch of crazy shits going on. I'm not gonna get into the whole thing, but one of these kids is sleeping over at the Gates' house, <laughs> and he sees his mother who's dead, and she's like, "Tommy, come down to me." And he comes down, he's like, "Oh my God, Mom, you're back!" And he's like dancing with his <laughs> mother, and then somebody's like, "Tommy, what the hell are you doing?" And it turns into a dead dog. <laughs> It's like this dead talk moment. He's like, uh, uh, uh. It's That's like, humiliating. It's a great supernatural prank. <laughs> There's a great way that this scene with him and the mother ends, too, because she's explaining, like, you know, you know, your mother's always alive. If you remember her, you know, she's alive in you. And Elijah Wood, taking a note from the good son himself, just goes, and in you. And I was like, ew. <laughs> Oh, Elijah Wood, now you're making my skin crawl. All these little critters. It's 2 p.m. It's 2 p.m. in Japan. Maybe Dad, we can get Dad on the phone. <laughs> you know Maybe what? Let's call Dad. Let's hurry this up a bit. Dad does call once, and Elijah Wood, I mean, and Macaulay Culkin just like gets, just doesn't, doesn't get Elijah Wood to get to the phone. Here's, here's my tip for David Morse in this movie. Ask to speak to an adult. Absolutely. Yeah. Twice this happens. He calls the first time is Macaulay Culkin and he's like, oh, hey there, Macaulay Culkin. Is Elijah Wood around? And he's like looking out the window like, no, nope, he's not here. And he's watching Elijah Wood play with the sister. And he's like, okay, well, could you tell him I called? It's like, no, ask to speak to your brother or your sister-in-law. Yep. Regardless of whether or not this kid's the good son or a little critter or whatever, like <laughs> talk to an adult. And then it happens again when Elijah Wood calls him. And he's like, oh, what? what? What's what's happening? And he's like, oh, Macaulay Culkin's really evil. And he's doing a bunch of twisted shit. And he's like, maybe you should go uh, talk to your doctor. Tell You know what? Go to your doctor and uh, tell her what you told me. Bye. <laughs> Listen, I'm down to my ring finger here. And these guys are <laughs> playing hardball. So. <laughs> it's going to be another couple of weeks. The, 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 the psychiatrist is a totally useless thread. It's so useless, but it also exemplifies another 
instance of like, again, I get it. It's Nantucket. It's small. But they're making this kid go to the psychiatrist by himself the first time we see her. They meet in like in a park. Like it's fucking, I don't know. The, like the conversation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. Like he moves a newspaper to the right and she puts down a cold <laughs> cup of coffee. Eight like year old kid. She comes up and he goes. Uh, she says, uh, your aunt told me that I could find you here. It's like, what the fuck are you talking that, about? That is a secret agent code. Your aunt told me you could find me here. Yeah. The weather is cold this time of year. <laughs> if I go to a, uh, you know, I'm a therapist and like, oh, you know, I got a kid for two weeks because his dad's doing God knows what. Uh, you know, I'm tasked with this kid's mother just died and I go to the caretaker. They're like. I don't know. He's in the park or something. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, lady? Yeah. You know what? Maybe you should just uh, stay at social services uh, <laughs> yeah, for a while. Exactly. A good SS friends. There's another instance of this later in the movie where um, Macaulay Culkin throws his fucking sister onto thin ice and she goes under the water and she's in the hospital. We'll get to that scene later. But when she's in the hospital, Macaulay Culkin like goes in and he's trying to put a pillow over her face. And then not D. Wallace turns the light on and she's like, what are you doing here? And he, they have like a little conversation. And then the mother fucking says to him, OK, well, I'll see you back at the house. I was like, what? what? No, you're driving him in no, presumably no. the station wagon you own back to your house. All right, Macaulay, here's my keys. Um, don't ding it up. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. They live in the middle of nowhere. They're surrounded by cliffs. There's no way to get to this place without a car or a long walk through a great graveyard i just oh i'll see you at the house that's something you say to your fucking 20 year old kid after you have dinner with them and you took separate cars because your 20 year old kid was coming from work and met you at the restaurant not when your 10 year old kid went to the hospital with you and you told him to go home by himself and also you've got one kid in the grave the other in a coma and you're sending the third one off just to go home you fucking hang on to that last kid like nothing's left that's what you do because you know what? Your record's pretty spotty with holding on to kids. You now have one and a half children. <laughs> well, well, there's the girl too, right? That's what I'm talking about. She's in a coma. Oh, right, and yeah, FYI, yeah. doesn't come back to the movie. Yeah, after okay, that. you're right. That's the half. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can we talk about my favorite part of Evil? Please. My this is my actually my favorite part of the whole movie. It makes it a classic movie. <laughs> And that's the gag called Mr. Highway. Oh, this is what you remember from this movie, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So Macaulay Culkin has this dummy that he creates. In his creep shed. Yeah, in his creep shed. His his unmanned, unwatched creep shed. Yeah, he gives it like this, you know, he gives it like a fake little human face, a hat he puts on it, he puts clothes on it, the whole thing. And then he has him and Elijah Wood drag it, presumably at least a mile. (laughs) In the middle of nowhere. And yeah. Elijah Wood doesn't know what this is for. He just goes along with it. And the day before, Macaulay Culkin did kill the dog, like, mm-hmm. which is kind of a forgetful scene when he just kills a dog. But like that has happened, and he's like, that was weird. And he's like, hey, you want to bring my friend Mr. Highway around? He's like, sure. This is honestly all on you, Elijah Wood, at this point, because you don't know when to say, I'm going to stay inside and drink Surge. You don't. What? Space Jam is on. I am fucking positive <laughs> of it. So he's... <laughs> So he's dragging, he's dragging this this mannequin. Yeah, and they they get to it's like um, they they get to they they get to a small road that has a bridge over a highway, and the whole gag is they're going to the Macaulay Culkin wants to throw this dummy over onto the highway to cause an accident. Yes, and that's what they do. <laughs> he's also doing some weird shit where he's like. Poor Mr. Highway, he just can't go on anymore. And I'm like, all right, so this kid knows like what suicide is. That's weird. And Elijah Wood's just like, what are you up to? And he's just like sitting on the perch, and he chucks him, and he's like, <gasps> and causes the biggest car accident in movie history. This is like body parts level car accident. I, it's a great car accident. I couldn't believe it. There's so many cars, <laughs> so many cars just piling up. Man, I think everyone on the highway must have been chasing the Blues Brothers. <laughs> Because there's no <laughs> other explanation. <laughs> it's there's... true. And a, the, it starts out with a Winnebago tipping over. Which yeah, because is... those are the guys. Those are the. Oh, the. We're, the, go- we're the good old it's boys. It's the good old boys. He's like, oh, poor Mr. Highway. Chuck. Da, 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 na, 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 na. <laughs> and that's, that's when Charles Napier, playing one of the good old boys, is like, 
Oh, this goddamn my my foot stuck. <laughs> they must have sprayed something on this. And they, then they start crashing, and the then fucking everyone, Illinois Nazis go flying. John was, Candy and all his orange whips are all there, over the road. Yeah, there was a blue station wagon. There were definitely <laughs> Illinois Nazis a, a foot. Yeah, there's a mall just five feet away from this overpass. <laughs> yeah, that they that's go been, into. that's been devastated. The Pier One Imports there is just in ruins. I didn't know you could fit that many cars onto Nantucket. I didn't know it could be done. It's it's a ten car pileup. The news report says a ten car pile like. If you're the tenth car in the tenth car pileup, you lose lunch. your license. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to lose your license. Like, you see what's going on and you veer off the road. <laughs> I just heard a thing uh, the other day on the news that up in Yonkers there was like a twenty car pileup. How do you have that? Oh my god! How fast is everyone going? I mean, that's the way we drive in New York, man. Everybody's got to get somewhere. I didn't know the Blues Brothers were in town. <laughs> yeah, dude, you, you didn't hear it. Ba, 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 da, da, da. You can hear it. It's, it's, oh, it's, I guess it's, cars it's, must be crashing and hearing <laughs> that song. But, and this is another thing uh, where I'm like, there has to be a witness of some kind. To see, like two kids. Yeah. This is what this movie is lacking is like, there needs to be like that sheriff's deputy that's like, now wait a minute. And he's yeah. kind of onto them. And then yeah. Macaulay Culkin fucking lynches him or something. <laughs> Like you need that you need that character who's yeah. like just about to uncover him and then he pushes him off the cliff. There is no hiding this. Like they def the people would have definitely saw three people up there in addition to well, you know, with the dummy, you know, including the dummy. Or you dust the the dummy for print, you see all the little hand prints, you're like, Well, it's a fucking kid. And they've been, he's been they've been kind of pretty good at trying to clean up their evil because when they do kill the dog, yeah, they they shoot it with that rusty nail. They actually go now. That actually, no, no, no. Take that back. This is a terrible idea because <laughs> it is. It's down at like the docks or the pier or something where they shoot this dog, and they physically go down there and collect the corpse of the dog. <laughs> and now I understand, like, we got to get rid of the body to show that there's not this crazy rusty nail in it or whatever. But you're seeing these two kids like dragging this dead dog, like, like a dead someone dog. Someone has to it's see this. It's a dead something in a bloody potato sack that they sacrifice to Tamara the Ring Girl, or what? You know, like yeah, they throw they it down the well, dump it down there. She's like, "Thank you." <laughs> And it's like, yeah, there's got to be someone in that cemetery, someone on the road who's like, oh, those kids are carrying a bloody sack. Let's maybe ask them what's going I on. Don't leave them alone. It's just the good son. <laughs> I could have I could have really used a creepy grounds, groundskeeper for this cemetery, being like, oh, I'm digging one for you soon, uh, Macaulay. You Again, keep though, up your evil ways. It's You need that character that's not like... Because no one in this movie is, uh, sides with Elijah Wood at all. They think no. he's crazy. Macaulay Culkin uses his mind games on everybody to spin it so it looks like Elijah Wood's the one doing all this crazy shit that he says Macaulay Culkin's doing. But you need that one adult character, whether it's a cop, whether it's the cemetery groundskeeper, yep. anyone who's like, no, no, I have the real truth. And then he gets his fucking throat cut. Yeah. You know who th should play that? Ernie Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> Just because? Just because. Well, he, he kind of reminds me of uh, his, his uh, mentally challenged hand that rocks the cradle character <laughs> who knows something's wrong with Rebecca de Mornay, and then she calls him a retard and gets him fired. <laughs> <laughs> he knows there's something wrong. He just doesn't know how to express himself. It, it's true. I, I, I just realized basically we're arguing that this movie needs to have one adult take interest in these children. <laughs> yeah, pretty much that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. The next scene, what we're going out for the night. Talk to you later, kids. Yeah. Oh, I Let's... can't believe this. Oh, How I can't about... believe it. Hey, you I can't believe it. Watch my kid. I don't care what you do with your kids. Uh, what are you, 10? 11? Hey, why don't you babysit yourselves tonight, huh? <laughs> Uh, they, here's the key to the liquor cabinet. Like, they're having dinner, and the dad's like, so, you boys up for playing babysitter tonight? And I'm like, this can't be happening. <laughs> you're, you're just joking around, right? You're going to call. Again, where's, like, the 16-year-old girl comes over, brings her boyfriend, Chad. He's on the football team. They're making out. Oh, Macaulay dude. Culkin kills them both. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see Chad versus... Um, Macaulay. Like, yeah. Mom, they were making out in the car, but they had the gas on for some reason, <laughs> and now they both fell asleep forever. He gets into some Home Alone-type pranks to these two. <laughs> that kid... Kevin McAllister isn't that far from the good son. No, not at all. He's, He's not, and... Macaulay Culkin in this movie totally does the Kevin McAllister like two eyebrows yeah. up thing. I was like, oh wait, I'm not gonna look at those movies the same again because he 
Kevin McAllister is like a, a, a George Zimmerman type, like a twisted little sociopath <laughs> that's just looking for the best possible chance for a justifiable homicide. Well, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, like oh, it's on now. Like, that's, that's fucking Kevin McAllister. Don't call the police. No, no, no. It's on now. Yeah, he's a real Napoleonic piece of shit. Because, like, if if the violence in those Home Alone movies were treated with with real more realistically, like he's throwing goddamn bricks in people's faces, <laughs> paint cans, <He's>, the <laughs> uh, the wet bandits are wet from blood. <laughs> They're wet with all their blood and fucking brain juice. Yeah, no, yeah, they corpses, man. Every once in a corpses. while, like around the holidays, those articles come back around where like they got someone to uh, say like the injuries that the wet bandits would actually sustain in those movies. Yeah, That's okay. pretty fucking great. Daniel Stern would have been dead first, I believe, if I if I'm remembering that right. The weirdest part about uh, Home Alone is at the end when Joe Pesci threatens to bite off all of Macaulay Culkin's fingers. I'm just gonna bite off your fingers. Yeah, it's weird. He's gonna eat that kid. <laughs> look, look a witch. When did you turn <laughs> into a fucking witch? Well, it's about Joe. the same time that his head caught on fire and instead of using words, he just goes hush, 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 hush. I think that's a, a spell that he's casting in that movie. He's like a, he's like a grown-up Miko Hughes. <laughs> If Joe Pesci's chest opened up in that movie and he like a dragon came out <laughs> and like the Joe Pesci skin suit just flopped to the ground, <laughs> wouldn't have shocked me. No. He's very evil in that movie. He is very evil in that movie. <laughs> so the ki- w- let's go out, you know, it's fucking pe- the beginning of Peter Pan for some reason. <laughs> And Nana the dog is watching everybody. <laughs> no, she's not, because Nana the dog got a rusty bolt in her fucking skull. <laughs> she's she's the at fuck. the bottom of a well. <laughs> so this is what the weird psychosexual game with the sister starts happening. Oh, where yeah. Where it's like, you're watching my sister. She's sweet. It'd be a shame if something happened to her. And it's like, let's play hide and seek. And they're, they're like both looking for their girlfriend. It's really uncomfortable. It's like, it's a little girl. Like, I, I, it, 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 yeah. Ian, <laughs> Ian and McEwen, no thank you. But it's fucked up, though. Like, he turns off, like, he cuts the power to the house. Yeah. He's like, we're going to do this in the dark. And they're, like, walking around this huge impossible house. Oh, man, house. Hogan's family was on. <laughs> yes. I, was, I, got all these, I got all these Taco Bell-style Dorito chips here <laughs> that they don't make anymore, but were fucking delicious. I'm not, I'm not done mixing my, my grape and orange soda. <laughs> Fuck, how's Urkel going to get out of that mess he was in? No, I'll never know. You're I, making me hunt down your sister. Yeah, if, if you want to play hide and seek, fine. I'm just fucking. I got my Game Boy. I know that I have a Game Boy. Enjoy mm-hmm. it. Yep, you have that Game Boy. You or, got Doctor Mario and Universe Killer ready to play. Or something happened in that Game Boy. Maybe it broke or something. Or on the on the giant car ride over, just ran out of and batteries. Dave Morris was just like, "I'll get this fixed in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take it to Japan with me." I'll get it repaired at the source. It'll probably be cheaper. So you can't bum out the universe, man. <laughs> and this is the beginning of the I'm going to hurt my sister that you love so much. Right. And not if I hurt her first. Like, <laughs> so this is when it, then the next day, like, you know, he stays. He's like, all right, you can't watch her all night. And Elijah Wood does watch her all night because heaven the fuck forbid. Lord knows what time these parents are coming home. It's like the middle of the night. Yep. I don't think they came home that <laughs> night. I think they got a room somewhere. They went to the mainland, the fucking Hojo on the mainland, got down to some fucking away from these kids. <laughs> they're not, they don't even have to get away from the kids to get down to some fucking, I'm sure. <laughs> they don't give a flying fuck about Well, they got on. that impossible house, so there's probably a bunch of hidden sex rooms in it, it and whatnot. <laughs> I'm, I find it surprising she would ever take off that uniform of hers. <laughs> <laughs> that habit? Yeah. No, no, no. Keep it on. Don't worry. I was planning on doing and that. By the way, the father of this movie is always dressed like Mark Summers hosting Unwrapped on the Food <laughs> Channel. Well, I don't know much like... about raising my kids, but I can tell you what's in a Snickers bar. <laughs> I have seen the inside of a Hershey's factory on television. <laughs> Better go wash my hands. <laughs> and the next day... Uh, because they've been watching their kids for maybe 90 minutes in the morning. And it's just like, <laughs> Elijah Wood wakes up and he's like, oh, you know, where, where's, uh, where's the, where are the Culkins? And she's <laughs> like, oh, they went ice skating. <laughs> and it's this busy ice skate. It's a frozen river, A, and B, everyone is on it. And it's like, 
nobody gives a flying fuck what these kids are doing. Nobody cares. And it's like, what I found hilarious was he runs through like four separate hockey games on this pond. But it's just like the same stock footage of Elijah Wood pushing through people. But it makes it look like 40 people are playing hockey at once. And they don't notice, like, no one notices until it's way too late. This kid swing his sister, like, he launches her through, like, the caution tape and onto the shallow ice. This little person stunt man goes right <laughs> in the water. And, you know, she's, like, stuck under the ice. And Macaulay Culkin does the weird, like, he crawls out there to make it look like he's trying to help, but only just puts his arm out so far. And then he's like... You gotta come to me. And she's just like drowning and he's watching her fucking go. Yeah, he's like Ugh. Rose at the end of Titanic. Like just got his hands on his knuckles. <laughs> mm, that looks painful. Mm. Oh, that was so romantic. <laughs> it really was. Wasn't that beautiful? Gee, you look cold. <laughs> Not <laughs> saying anything, huh? No room on this suitcase for you. It was like a fucking door. It's enormous and all she needs to do is move over a little bit and there's room well, enough for two. The, the thing is in that movie the underlining thing is now Rose is from the upper class <laughs> yeah, exactly. and he's from the lower class yeah. so therefore he dies just so she can you know put her feet up yeah just just, just really be comfortable just like yeah. Billy Zane at the that, end of that movie. It's, just, it's just capitalism man hey um so not only by the way is it like your kids just are out somewhere you already lost a child to drowning. Yep. Yeah. You let them go ice skating on a pond where there could be more drowning. Like, and, come on, E.T.'s mom. And come on, Mark Summers. You already got the sweater on. Go the fuck out there and watch your kids. <laughs> That's the thing. They're not even busy. They're just fucking prattling around the house. They're yeah, just no. home. They're not doing anything. Sorry, I got to go uh, walk around my three, four-story mansion. <laughs> Sorry I'd go ice skating with you, but I want to see if Urkel gets out of this jam. <laughs> you sure there's a lot of good TV on? All right. Talk to you later. <laughs> And, yeah, I mean, it takes forever for adults with axes to show up and cut this little girl out. And that's when she goes into a coma. And Elijah Wood, I guess, walks to the hospital. I'm sorry. Uh, Macaulay walks to the hospital and walks back. Yep. Just because that's that's how we do it in this movie. And then they have the conversation where Elijah Wood's like, you know, I know all this sinister shit that you're doing, you know. And Macaulay Culkin's like. It's the old, like, well, who's going to believe you? I could just say that you did it, blah, 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 blah. This is the beginning of my favorite series of events in this movie, is proving Elijah Wood is crazy. <laughs> and he wakes up in the middle of the night one night, and the he goes downstairs, and, like, Macaulay Culkin's standing next to the, the refrigerator, and is like, hey, you want a snack? Go eat something. He's like, what'd you do to the food? He's like, you think I poisoned my whole family? <laughs> Good night. And there, nothing looks crazier than when adults wake up and find a kid throwing all of the food into the garbage <laughs> disposal. You look like a real Looney Tune when that happens. He's yeah. so feverishly <laughs> trying to get that whole refrigerator down there. He's got, got a whole turkey in the fucking sink. <laughs> He's using like a huge stalk of celery to plunge more food into it. And I'm like, you know, all you really have to do is throw this in the garbage. Yep. Because once something's in a garbage bag, <laughs> I'm not taking it back out and putting it in the refrigerator. Just put it with the garbage. Yeah. You don't have to clog this fucking garbage disposal. Take the garbage bag and throw it down the well. <laughs> and exactly. That's where you put all the evidence. <laughs> yeah. And this is when... Mark Summers starts to get real fucking tough with this kid. He's sick and tired of it. <laughs> he hasn't done jack shit, but he's sick and tired of it anyway. He just like he launches this kid into his room. Like, go to bed, goddammit. <laughs> but when they have that conversation in the treehouse, by the way, is the the infamous line in this movie where Macaulay Culkin tells Elijah Wood, uh, don't fuck with me. And this line always stays with me because I had this movie taped off of a Fox broadcast. Nice. Had it on VHS. You know, I've seen it a bunch of times. And it was the greatest example of poor vocal casting choices while getting someone to dub over a line. So here's Macaulay Culkin with his like Macaulay Culkin voice. And he goes to say the line. And instead of fuck, they put in fool. But they clearly just hired a deep voiced man. So the broadcast is like, don't fool with me. <laughs> and it was like the most obvious thing. It's just, I'll never forget it. I was like, how does someone make that choice when you're hiring people to do this? Like, just get a kid to come in and say fool. Record your own kid saying it and bring it into work the next day. And Keith David as Macaulay Culkin. Dude, it <laughs> sounded like Keith David. <laughs> <laughs> 
unbelievable. Now that's the line that that you know pops people talk about. Now the best line is a little hidden in that scene, <laughs> and that's when Macaulay Culkin tells Elijah Wood, "Your mom is maggot food." <laughs> Yeah, it's a good burn. Yeah, Sick good. burn. And it's true, too. Well, this is around the time this whole conversation is when Elijah Wood, who is truly crazy, is like, your mom is just the reincarnation of my mom, and she wanted to be with me, and, you know, she just wanted to find a way, and she's using your mom as a vessel. And <laughs> Macaulay Culkin, who's killed three dogs and it fucking drowned his kid brother, is like, you're fucking nuts, dude. <laughs> He's like, hey, uh, hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the fucking crazy kid in this movie, but that's messed up. <laughs> he's like, he's like, your mom's, she's my mom now. And he's like, uh huh. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll go see if Urkel gets out of that jam. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hang out with you. <laughs> What's that, dad? The surge is cold. Be right in. Yeah, so it's it's your classic psychological thriller thing. Like he flips the table, so everyone in the movie thinks that Elijah Wood is crazy. Elijah Wood goes to the mom. He's like, hey, by the way, uh, I'm pretty sure Macaulay Culkin killed that other kid. Yeah. And she fucking slaps him across the face. Oh, it's everyone is fucking roughhouse and David Morris's poor kid in this movie. It's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> you're here with us for two weeks? You're in abuse territory, by the way. Like, the dad's just grabbing him by the scruff of the neck. The mom's fucking <laughs> punching him in the teeth. Yeah, what a <laughs> fucked up family, man. <laughs> it's... it's Oh my god! You you drop your kid off like right after his mother dies. It's yeah. Like, well, you know, it, whatever doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. <laughs> if you want your kid to be real strong when you get back from Japan, leave. <laughs> Well, a special episode of Unwrapped. Mark Summers Child Boot Camp. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, I got a, I got this great, I got this sweet deal in Japan. Uh, I guess my brother's family's hanging on by a thread. I'll leave them with them. <laughs> <laughs> They're barely getting on after that, after that death. <laughs> Welcome back to Mark Summers Hunger Games. <laughs> Right here on the cooking channel or whatever the fuck. Okay, you're going to see if you can find the flag up the booger-filled nose while the flaming arrows are shooting at you. <laughs> and here comes the newest contestant with filed down teeth. <laughs> a, little, a little shark kid. Man, a shark kid. That would be terrifying. This is where you could use a couple of shark kids. Hey, Elijah Wood, here I come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bite your little fingers off. <laughs> Played by Joe Pesci, of course. <laughs> oh, God. And of course, uh, Macaulay Culkin gets to the psychiatrist first, which is amazing. That this psychiatrist doesn't know when she's getting played. She's the worst. She looks like a how- lot like uh, B. Arthur there. She does yeah. look very B. Arthur-esque. Mm-hmm. That's, that's accurate. But... How terrible of a child psychiatrist are you that you're just sitting in your little Nantucket child psychiatrist's office and this little kid comes in and he's like, hey, uh, I've got some information about a patient of yours. Like, you're a 70-year-old trained (laughs) professional. You've been in this business for a while. This isn't your first rodeo. To to be fair, though, it's Elijah Wood's fault because early on in the movie when Macaulay Culkin is distributing... Uh, is exhibiting, sorry, uh, evil traits. Elijah Wood makes a classic therapy mistake. He's like speaking in the hypothetical about a kid he might know. Uh, He's yeah. like, yeah, it, what? Let's say there was a kid that was doing all this bad stuff to people and hurting people. What do you think that would make him an evil kid? And of course, the therapist is like. Well, I got a real fucking Looney Tune on my hands. Oh, boy. She's like licking her lips like, oh, boy, it's my <laughs> new book. Just <laughs> walked into my office. Hey there. Hey there, $60,000 advance. <laughs> <laughs> and she's all like, you know, I, I don't believe in evil because I'm a rational person who can see things from different points of views and stuff. And, and Elijah Woods is like, you should believe in evil. <laughs> you should. Because <laughs> I've looked into the face of evil and that evil is a boy. And he just walks away, and it's like, he's talking about himself, right? Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> he's that just also, saying that he is evil, right? It's the old asking for a friend mistake. You can't do that to a therapist. They can see through that. You have to be like, I know a kid. He's, I'll give you his name, his address, where he lives, and I'll tell you about him. Is this okay or and not? And okay? he killed the dog. Just fucking tell people. You know, tell someone about the dog. <laughs> Just, Wouldn't that just be bring the, up bring up the homemade bolt gun? How about Mr. Highway? Instead of just going, oh, 
he's he's an evil boy. Oh no, he's gonna and then always just escalating to human murder. Tell him about the other things. Yeah, just and then <laughs> then work your way up to oh he also kills kids. This <laughs> this like vague theory about pure evil. It's like you've got hard evidence. Yep. Like you don't have an X file. You've got like a real <laughs> case here. Yeah, it's just, the real thing. You've yeah. got a shed with nothing but evidence, which the mother Finally, you know, after the other kid gets into a coma, it's just like maybe something's going on with uh, Macaulay here. So she finally deems to go inside this shed and finds the rubber ducky from the bathroom. Here's the bullshit part about that, though. So she walks into this shed and it doesn't come together for her until she finds this rubber ducky. Yeah. She walks right by a doll that's <laughs> hanging by a noose. Yes. That is all the evidence you've ever needed to put against a child. It's an effigy of a, <laughs> of, of a girl, I guess that's probably, you know. It looks a, a lot like a little girl. Yes. It's, it's house. not like, it's just like, oh, I tied a rope around her and hung her. Like, it's a fucking noose. Mm. It's a beautiful noose. <laughs> it's one of the most beautiful nooses I've ever seen. Andrew Jupin's beautiful deuces coming to the coming to Nat Geo. Well, what you got here is a uh, classic Civil War news. Oh wow! You can tell by the nodding. <laughs> it's worth uh, probably fifty thousand dollars. You see, the Confederates tied their knots differently. <laughs> Everything you ever wanted to know about noosing. Oh, this is a prison <laughs> noose. You can tell by the by the grease stain and the fact that it's just an extension cord. <laughs> A bunch of shoelaces tied together. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's one of the inside the prison nooses, not one of the professional execution nooses. And she's like, "Oh my god, this rubber ducky!" And there's just like the bolt gun is right there. This fucking rusty fucking it's leather a face house of contra- horrors. It, it, it really, really there's is. There's probably like a Mister Highway prototype. This is <laughs> just like this rubber ducky. My yeah. goodness, it's like when uh. When uh, the the chick walks into the house in Texas Chainsaw and like all the living room furniture is made of bones <laughs> and there's just a chicken hanging in a bird cage and she's like, hmm, better take a look around this house a little more. Pretty weird. And she's like, so, <laughs> oh my God, what have you done? What have yeah, you done? Because he's got a trophy from the murder. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I he's... know. I mean, I got my own. <laughs> you got a whole collect. case. Yeah. Little Ooh. critters. <laughs> What's bullshit though is like he sneaks up behind her and he's like, "What are you doing in here?" I would be like, "Um, well, it's my shed. Uh, I paid the mortgage on this house, and you're eight years old, so it's my shed. Even though you keep all your killing trophies in here, I'd just be like, you know, I think I've been giving you a little too much latitude for a little while." <laughs> Things are going to change around here, and this shed is now closed. <laughs> this is a crime scene, so <laughs> yeah, just, we're just going to step outside without touching anything more than we have. <laughs> That's right. We'll be with you in a moment. He's like, uh, Mom, uh, um, don't you want to find out how Urkel gets out of that jam? Uh, I think the surge is cold. Come on. <laughs> Not this time. They go on a walk instead. They go on a nice nice country walk. This well, woman no, is a fucking moron. This, this is before... This is. When Elijah Wood, oh, is, in between, me. Elijah Wood gets locked away by Mark Summers. In a, it gets oh. caught in a real sticky situation. He he gets locked into one of the office, one of the one of seven or eight offices <laughs> in this six hundred and fifty room house. And the only way he can get out is slide down a giant tongue slide. <laughs> <laughs> it has got to get that big peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> So, you know, it's the final thing, and, like, uh, Macaulay Culkin's like, my mother's wise to me. I'm going to fucking kill her. And he's like, <laughs> oh, no, you're not. And he, she's my mother. And he grabs scissors and has it at his throat. Oh, like, that's right. He's like, come on, do it. The blood's going to spray across the room. You ever <laughs> see the red mist? It's, <laughs> it's fucking intense. It's probably what your dad's doing in Japan right now, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Bunch of fucking swords and shit. <laughs> and Mark Summers was like, holy shit! I should have been watching these kids! Let me put down this surge! <laughs> Let me put down the Sunday That's paper for also a second. what Mark Summers says when he sees the calorie count of that surge. <laughs> oh my god, unwrapped! I've just been destroying the world! <laughs> my pee's all fucked up! Hey, this uh, food is terrible! 
quick detour because all this talk about Mark Summers just drummed up a weird thing I remember watching. Any of you guys ever check out the Mark Summers Halloween special that Nickelodeon aired where Mark Summers and a group of uh, multi-ethnic children go up to a haunted house no. in a red Cadillac? <laughs> And then I vaguely Mark, remember this. Mark Summers vanishes in a phone booth and becomes a skeleton, and it's all these kids just in this haunted mansion. Oh, my God. I'm like, what are you doing with all these kids? They're clearly not all yours. <laughs> they can't be. I, I think I was watching this at my creepy cousin's house while he wanted to go out and play in the yard, and I was like, no, 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 that's fine. <laughs> I don't know, I want to see if uh, Summers comes back from being a skeleton. Also, the surge is cold. <laughs> skeleton. <laughs> so he... Again, like he is pissed off at this little knife wielding Elijah Wood, right? So he he chucks him in an office, and it's it's like the end of Cuckoo's Nest. Elijah Wood takes this huge chair and throws it through <laughs> a glass window and uh, runs after Macaulay Culkin and the mother who are on their walk. They're on a walk, and they're going to go out to the cliff and just have a. A nice little conversation, yeah, even though she knows the... he's a murderer. Yeah, yeah. You already know that you, you, at very least, it's very, very suspecting that your child murdered your other child. Let's take it to the. Let's take him to the most disastrous area, <laughs> the most peril, perilous landscape there is. And she's like, "All right, I'm just going to ask you point blank. You kill your little brother. Come on, you can tell me. I'm a mom. We're just rapping here. We're just having a good rap session." And he like he denies it at first, and then she's like, "Come on, seriously, you can tell me." And it's it's actually a pretty creepy delivery for Macaulay's credit. He goes, uh, "So what if I did?" And I'm yeah. like, "Uh, that's little... just not what a parent ever wants to hear, is it?" Yeah. So what if I did kill him? Oh, she, now you just want to send me away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah want to send me away. To that. Well, it's like, well, no fucking shit. Well, to her credit, she's not like, well, fuck you and throw him right off, like launch him like <laughs> Lucy would launch the football. But she's <laughs> she's like, you know, well, then we'll have to get you help. And, you know, a lot of people will help you out. We'll get through it together. He's like, You're going to send me away to, the, to one of those rooms, aren't you? She's like, all right, I'll make you a deal. If you can get all the red flags out of this huge ice cream sundae, you don't have to go away. But you only have 30 seconds, and if you don't get them all, it's off to the nut house. Put this helmet on and try and fill this cup all the way up to the line. And then go over. Your dad's over there, and you got to pour it into your dad's cup. And if he spills more than the water line, you go to the nut house. That'd be, that's a great way to... Have people committed is they have to play double dare first. Oh, man. <laughs> well, the, it's a trick too because even if they actually want to play double dare, <laughs> yeah. they also they need to go. <laughs> and he shoves her off this cliff, right? She just goes oof and goes off. Well, it's amazing because he like he's like you just want to send me away, and he runs away like towards the cliff, and she chases after him and gets to the cliff like, huh, that was easy, and then he's like. What did you thought I was going to jump off this cliff? And then he runs at her and does it. It's like fucking so sinister. She goes right off and Elijah Wood's like, oh, fuck. And he <laughs> runs to try and help her. And she's like hanging on yeah, by a thread. She gets like she gets like stuck on a branch or something like some miracle happens. <laughs> what yeah. I love, though, is he throw, you know, he pulls the chief and rips the water fountain out of the floor <laughs> and throws it through the window. And then Mark Summers comes in like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and he's called the psychiatrist. So it's like Mark Summers and this little old lady trying to wrestle him out of the window and then he like elbows the old lady or something and runs out the front door oh, in, in little critters the old lady is played by the old la little old lady from poltergeist <laughs> <laughs> this child has a lot of problems oh I, it's been a long time since i've seen a child this evil <laughs> i'm gonna have to get paid in advance for this <laughs> This rubber ducky is the work of a mastermind sinister child. By the way, you didn't notice that doll hanging by a noose when you walked in? You really are bad parents. <laughs> usually, uh, usually people know what's going on inside of a shed on their own property. <laughs> but apparently couldn't be bothered. You, usually you can't even see Urkel get into a jam. This... <laughs> The television's usually all static. <laughs> you guys should get cable. That would solve most of your problems. Ooh, how long has it been? I reckon the surge is cold by now. 
solo ass skating, huh? <laughs> That's pretty irresponsible. I love in this world where everyone's waiting for Surge to cool. Like, <laughs> was this a problem in yeah, 1990s? They only <laughs> sold hot Surge in the 90s. It was only, you could buy it rip roaring hot and then you had to take it home and cool it off. Let me tell you something of the two beverages I miss most in this world Surge and Ecto Cooler. R.I.P.D. Both of those drinks. Ecto Cooler was excellent. It really was. They both turn your pea green, that's for sure. Surge was just before its time. Because it was the super caffeine soda and the world wasn't ready for it yet. Now we have that shit all the time. Well, Diet Pepsi Max, there's more caffeine in it. Yeah. I, was, I was watching American Movie for the first time recently, and there's that scene where they give that old man, so it's like, oh, hey, Grandpa, here's here's a new cola called Surge. And he's like, pretty good. Here's $80,000 to make a bad horror movie. Let me tell you, if there was ever a documentary I kind of want to just talk about on a podcast, it's that one. Maybe we'll do it as a, as a mini. Oh, God. Yeah, that could be an on screen. I was just doing so much acid, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, I come over here and Grandpa Larry's just got all that surge and I was like, hey, is the surge cold yet or what? Mike, we're going to make Coven right now. You're, oh. you're ruining Coven. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I getting in the Coven shot again? I'm just trying to get to the fridge to get some of that ice cold surge, don't you know? Because if, do, if I don't drink surge, I'll drink beer, and that's just going to lead to a big old fat acid flashback for me. Beer just leads to acid. It just does it every time. God, I love it. I love it so much. So when we last left Macaulay Culkin, <laughs> he's hanging from a cliff. Well, actually, no, this is a good old-fashioned little person stunt fight, which is this the is best what, part. This is what made the cover of the calendar was this fight scene. <laughs> it was just, it is just little person against little, it's Ian versus McEwen, and they're just in a, in a bare-knuckle boxing match, just really going at it. And there's a fucking bad wig on one of these kids. Oh, it's just the floppy top of a mop that they put on to make it Macaulay Culkin's hairdo. And, you know, the mother is climbing up from the from the cliff. Talk about Sylvester Stallone being in this movie, by the way. <laughs> yeah. This is some cliffhanger shit. She's bare knuckle crawling up this flat wall. A helicopter crashes into the cliff and explodes. <laughs> Everything happens. I mean, this fight is as funny as that... Uh, that Girl Scout fight an airplane because they're just <laughs> going at it. Like, you know, like if there was a broken bottle, they'd be like trying to stab each other with it. I mean, they're really just trying to take each other's life. Like, that's what's going <laughs> it's on. Amazing. And of course, they both roll over and as and, the mom's now up on top and she's got she, one on one arm, one on the other. She's mm-hmm. trying to save them both. But of course, Macaulay Culkin's like, give me the other hand, Ma. Come on. Mom, give- I love you. Mom. Mom, I love you. Mom, come on. Mom. And she's like, you're just a phony little devil person. And then he goes down like Palpatine, man. It is just like (laughs) all sorts of force lightning Mm -hmm. shooting back. What I love is it's kind of just the same scream he does when he puts the aftershave on his face. Can we hear it? (laughs) That is that tickles me the right way. It's awesome, too, because then we get a, a, a shot of his his head splattered on a rock and there's <laughs> this blood and it's and just the, mr highway with a red sweater on it's really <laughs> intense because like we know he's dead like i don't have that thing of like we're gonna look down like at the end of halloween and he's gone yeah like, it's <laughs> it's spiky rocks he's not making it I, it'd be great if he was gone because that would set up little uh little, little critters, critters yeah. yeah oh my god where's henry I knew he was pure evil, <laughs> evil personified. Yeah, now speaking of psychiatrists who believe in evil, <laughs> Dr. Loomis makes no sense. What a cr- <laughs> what a crazy coot. <laughs> he is. I mean, all he does is talk about evil this and evil that and magic this and fucking goblin that. Like you're I, you're a man of science. I yeah. looked in his child's eyes, they were the devil's eyes. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Okay, you're off this case. I need, I need like, maybe, an objective person right now. Excuse me, Dr. Loomis, but maybe uh, something happened to this child in his developmental stages that made him, <laughs> as you call, evil. Yes, I would, uh, I would use an informed guess to say that his mother was probably raped by the devil. <laughs> well, I, I'm, Dr. Loomis, are you, what kind of medications do you have him on? Or is, are you doing a, a lot of therapy? It's, uh, it's pure voodoo. <laughs> uh, 
uh, exorcisms at this time. I don't think any any modern first world medicines will be able to remedy this child. Give me 12 cc's of holy water, stat. <laughs> you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Sheriff. Do you know where in this town of Haddonfield I could find some Wolf's Bane <laughs> at this no. late hour. No, no about, I do not. Uh, I, we have a we have a lot of Thorazine uh, some sedatives. What about at that uh, that quaint little hardware store we were just at earlier this afternoon? Well, in the back of it, you can get weed. <laughs> There's some kid over there that sells it. You know that just might work. <laughs> You fucking mellow Michael out for a change. Yeah. You know what? That, that's the thing is, I would like to see Michael Myers try to kill all those people while high as shit. <laughs> Michael Myers, all he needed was to bomb the universe. If yeah. only <laughs> at-home gaming existed at the time. Yeah, oh, honestly, though, if if Grand Theft Auto existed, my, no Michael Myers. He's just, no. he's just got, like, a girlfriend, and, yep. you know, he's... He's just an internet troll, then. He's working nine to five. He's still kind of, like, a, a little too inappropriately attracted to his sister, but nobody's perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he, you know, Nico's just killing people. It's fine. <laughs> uh, I mean, at the end of this movie, it's my favorite thing in the world is when, uh-oh, here comes a narrator, you know, just, like, out of nowhere... <laughs> And, um, you know, Elijah Wood is just, like, on some other mountain somewhere else. I think it's just David Morse picked He's him up and they right. drove back to the desert. They're back at the desert. You don't see the father whatsoever. You nope. don't see the trip. You don't see any of the aftermath of whatever happened in Nantucket. <laughs> These, or in Tokyo, either. <laughs> yeah, These I, are stories that need an epilogue of some kind. I need to line. see David Morse with his eight fingers. I need yeah. to see it. Also, speaking of which, I mean, he, he, Elijah Wood's just like, I never asked Nancy whether or not, you know, if, if the situation was different, if she would let me fall. But I guess I never will. And it's like kind of like a, ooh. Ending. That is, but I guess I never will is the worst ooh. ending to a fucking middle school <laughs> short you know story. Yeah, it, it's, it's a bad last But line. I guess I never will. And then my father said he made a what he called a fat stack. I always <laughs> wondered what he meant by that. I always meant to ask him, but I guess I never will. <laughs> That's what it needed. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, let, let, let's take this from another, another the climax of this movie from another angle. Okay? Sure. Um, the father has no idea what's going on with this kid, right? He's busy figuring out what's in a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's doing absolutely not. He doesn't know that he's evil. He doesn't know. I don't even think he knows his daughter's in a coma, to be quite honest. <laughs> But, Didn't I have a daughter around here? She's missing Urkel. <laughs> and, <laughs> Which story is she on? Seven? <laughs> and your wife go, and that you see Elijah would try and kill your fucking kid. That's why you rough him up. You got some Looney Tune in your house, right? And this, your your wife goes out. She's already lost one kid. She comes back and she's like, oh, yeah, Macaulay was evil and I threw him off a cliff. Sorry. This well, woman would be on every station of the, the, this is the biggest this, news story of the year. No, yep. this is what you need. To, the, this is what has to happen. If I was in either position, mm -hmm. Eli Elijah Wood or the mother, let's get our stories straight. <laughs> yes, okay? you have to. He just fell. Yeah. And you know what? Honestly, let's leave it at that. Macaulay Culkin fell off this cliff. It's terrible. Let's not even let's not even make it public that he killed Richard. You know, let's just move on with yeah. everything. Or you take that that bolt gun and shoot yourself in the arm and throw it down the cliff, and it's just like <laughs> it's just make it look like a real a real showdown. Ugh. See, now this is the pickle that movies like this find themselves in, though, right? Because it's like we've already we've already been rotting through this movie for 87 minutes and it feels like two and a half hours yeah it's a really grueling movie for that kind of thing to be popped in that's another 15 possibly it's even be a court minutes. case i'm sorry like this exactly. woman she lost her kid like that's you're going to jail and everyone everyone on fucking gawker is fucking calling her name anyway, that's like, almost <laughs> that's almost three out of three yeah she almost lost them all <laughs> exactly She's got wow! You uh, almost pitched a perfect game of killing <laughs> you children. Kept going for the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you could probably tie her to the the kid in the coma too if you wanted to. World's worst mother. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. 
And the and the dad would fucking prosecute her all the way because he doesn't know. Like, wh- why would I trust some fucking kid that almost tried to cut my kid's throat and, you know, and Butterfingers over there who killed my other kid? <laughs> and then the next thing I know, you know, they teamed up and now, whoops, my good son is dead. <laughs> I had one good son. Now he's do dead. You th- do you think Mark Summers will tell uh, the father when he gets back, like, I don't know. I, I know you were in Tokyo making your fat stack, but I just want to let you know that your kid is cursed. <laughs> First, first, your wife died, and now my good son. Like and they, uh, the, the the story doesn't let us know, but presumably that daughter of mine, she's a goner. <laughs> we're gonna have to, she she's got a DNR, so we're just gonna pull the she's, plug she's on this. She's never back in the movie. Is no, she? she's, no, she's, she doesn't come back. She's on the hospital bed, and it's also dead. really unfair to Elijah Wood's character. To not have any kind of vindication. Usually in these movies, yes. it's like, okay, everyone wow, you it. weren't crazy. He doesn't even really have a conversation with the aunt to be like, I fucking told you. <laughs> yeah. And she has to be like, yo, Mark, I should have believed you. Sorry I, uh, sorry I slugged you before. <laughs> yeah, sorry for that quick whip across the face I gave you. Yeah, it, it's it's a really abrupt like oh, oh oh the movie's over like it's just it's just yeah. I don't know why it like got caught with its pants down like, oh fuck <laughs> end the movie just, just end it oh get out of here the movie's over with <laughs> oh yeah the uh, the the little people were out of their their trench coat and <laughs> they had to quickly end the movie <laughs> they got back on their 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 tandem bicycle and rode away. <laughs> Wait, Ian and McEwen, come back. We got to figure out how the movie ends. How about an epilogue? <laughs> well, to be fair, it's not Ian McEwen's fault. Apparently, he had like a, a whole series of stuff about how Kit, Mc, Kit, I almost called him Kit McAllister, yeah. uh, <laughs> Kit Culkin, like hired his own writer, and there was a bunch of stuff. He, he like almost disowned the movie because of all the shit that happened. Oh, yeah, Dude, Kit so Culkin, celebrity parents, just fucking get over yourselves. Mm. That's, That's a real sad good son situation. Of shit. Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. Would anybody recommend The Good Son? I would, actually. And you, I know you guys felt like it was a little long, but it's only an hour and 27 minutes, and I felt like it had a decent pacing to it. And it's just little kids being evil, which yeah. is always fun to watch in some degree. And I, you know, I don't think it's, you know, I mean, we talked about it. You know what, you know what to expect. <laughs> I kind of agree with you. I'm I'm on that fence too. I, I on on that side of the fence, I should say. It's it's a fun movie, especially like I, I feel like this is a movie I can imagine a lot of people not having seen because it's like an older movie. It's like Macaulay Culkin, especially if you're young, you know, and if you're in your twenties, like oh, I don't, you miss the whole Culkin craze. Yeah, definitely search this movie out. I mean, it's on it's on Netflix. It's really easy. This to is find. top Culkin, right? It here. is top Culkin. Yeah, you know, I, it's like a light recommend for me. I you know I saw it when it came out. I didn't see it in the theaters, but like I said, I taped it off of Fox because you need to watch it more than once, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it does feel long to me, but it's just, it's fucking crazy. And I think, you know, it'd be funny to make a nice, uh, double feature this and, uh, Elijah Wood's Maniac remake. <laughs> yeah. I showed that, uh, where I work and did like a talk back Q and a with it. And all these people were like, it was weird seeing Elijah Wood do all those things. I was like, yeah, that that's why that movie works. Like it's the perfect casting, but see him go from like fighting the good son to like, if his character in Maniac is what Macaulay Culkin would grow up to be if his mother didn't throw him off a cliff. He's been very attracted to, like, mental illness in his work lately, too. Like, with Wilfred as, as well. Another, oh, yeah. Another nutcase performance. <laughs> Sin City, he plays a maniac. That's true, Oh, yeah. he's great in that movie. He doesn't say a word. It's fantastic. It's fair to say that Elijah Woods, like, turned out to be a pretty great actor. I mean, he, you, he act, I don't know if we've said this yet, but he acts circles around Macaulay Culkin in this movie. He, he really does. He, I mean, because he's playing... It's weird, too, to see him, like, because we joke that he's playing, like, a 50-year-old man trying to date his aunt. But, like, <laughs> he kind of is. It's totally true. He's so he's, he's acting more like an adult, which is weird, but he pulls it off. I mean, compared to Macaulay Culkin, who's just, like, being fed lines from Kit Culkin off camera. <laughs> Why don't you say it this way, slave child? <laughs> Those poor fucking kids, man. Thank God he got divorced from his parents. Yeah, we were thinking about that. Like, how much money? Like, do you think he's all right? Like, he got out of that scot-free? I think he's all right. They fucking ring him out to dry, though, maybe. I mean, I'm sure he lost a portion of his fortune, sure. (laughs) 
but it was a big fortune to lose a portion of. So I guess he's probably still okay. Well, if not, he can always go to uh, Japan or Bangkok to make that <laughs> fat stack. Hey, his his band, the Pizza Underground, might make a fat stack in Japan. That's true. You hear about that? I only heard like the headline. I don't know. The it's details. he's he's in a Velvet Underground cover band uh, where they do. I guess it's Weird Al esque covers because it's all songs that the Velvet Underground did, but they changed the lyrics to make it all about pizza, such as waiting for the delivery man. I would say you're a little too old to be in that band. Just just throwing that <laughs> one out there. You're probably too old to be in that band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you do never know. Fat stack in Japan, man. They might go for it. It's true. That's The Good Son from 1993, directed by Joseph Rubin. Uh, if you want more information about this fine program, you can check out our website, whmpodcast.com. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. We are at WHM Podcast. We're very active in the social media community. We enjoy hearing from you, so get at us on there or email us. We all hate movies at gmail.com. Rate and review the show wherever it is you subscribe to it, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, uh, podcatcher if you can do reviews there i don't know how that one works but wherever you get your podcast from uh feel free to give a little recommend to us we'd surely appreciate it speaking of recommends tell your friends about the show we haven't said that in a while so get oh also that back uh, on there. tell tell strangers about the show stop them on the street do a message board comment whatever totally you know what you might stop mark summers you know what uh get a dummy write whm rules on it <laughs> r-l-u-l-z <laughs> And chuck it right over an overpass. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Free no, publicity. No, don't no. do that. No, 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 no. Just chuck it into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> get Aquaman. Let's yeah, it, might, it, might, it might wash up on Japan and we'll get a fat stack. Or a ship full of Somali pirates finds it. Oh, yeah. And as far as next week's episode goes, Stephen, do you have a, a hint for the fine listeners? Here's the here's a hint. For oh, you. Eric's got one. Okay. Okay. Um, one of the protagonists is a mailman. Ah, oh. very good. One of the protagonists is a mailman. Until next week, I'm Andrew Jupin. Students at Eric Sisko. Take it easy. Mm-hmm.